from a Pan-African perspective, do you think the continent is doing all harm to itself by having its media outfits focusing on the two largest markets to the detriment of progress and potential in smaller countries like Botswana, uh, Mauritius, and several other smaller countries that are doing uh, exceptionally well? But my question is, from your perspective as a branding specialist, do you think the continent is doing more hard to itself by having those media outfits, you know, with that kind of uh, perspective? Thank you very much. Well, what people are looking for out there is something to be loved, hearing about. When you take Afri Africa as a unit, as a whole, right, there isn't any problem with uh, you know, focusing on Nigeria. That shouldn't be the question. The question should be what is being said about Nigeria. That's the important thing. If we can somehow control the narrative of this foreign media about Nigeria, look, Ask yourself a question. Nobody out there really even knows the countries that are in Nigeria and are in Africa. Ask an American the countries that are in Africa. He doesn't know. Some of them don't even know about, maybe because Nigeria is now in the media, so they can say they know about Nigeria. But they, they just see Africa as one country. In fact, some of them call Africa a country. So I don't see any problem with, you know, reporting only on Nigeria and South Africa. The problem, like I said, is what is being reported. And you see, the problem, I've been in several brainstorming sessions, and just like Adibaba was saying, the very thing that is the advantage to Africa, we have thrown it away. We're talking about business. We're talking about insurance. We're not masters in business. We're not masters in insurance. But we're masters in the entertainment. But we think entertainment is not worth talking about. I was in a meeting with Commissioner of Tourism, Lagos State, it's about, you know, about eight years ago. And they were trying to consider the themes that they were going to use for tourism in Lagos. Do you know what they were talking about? They were talking about building the longest canopy in West Africa. You know what a canopy is? It's that thing that you walk through. And they were trying to compete with Ghana in West Africa there. And number two, they were talking about business tourism. And I'm like, in business, you have multiple taxation and ease of doing business is not put in Lagos. Yet you want to make that your thing. We must realize that the answer is intrinsic in us. So I was telling him in that meeting, we Nigerians are party people. Merit making is a part of our, and there is nothing wrong with that. We spend 50 billion naira on champagne alone every year. Champagne alone. I'm not talking about beer. I'm not talking about soft drinks. I'm not talking about, you know, the party venue. I'm not talking about Ashwabi. I'm not talking about all the other things that go into party. The party industry in Lagos, in the West, in Nigeria, is a multi-billion naira industry. And it is an industry that if we ever tap into the entire global party in Lagos, why is that? In us, is party. You cannot sustain tourism by foreign arrivals. It doesn't work like that. You sustain tourism by the patronage of the people who belong to that place. I don't think that party can ever stop having patronage. In those days, when you close the road, your party is the biggest. True or false? It was Fashola that came and stopped. And why did he stop it? 
Um, Okoya Thomas had a party on Lagos Expressways, closed it down. And for five, six hours, nobody could pass that place. I know because I had a program and I was expecting somebody to be in that program and he was in that traffic for six hours. So Fashola comes and says, no more. Don't use the road for it. I thought that the party industry was going to die. Rather than die, the fencers came out. We must party. Now, we are thinking that we need some better themes like business, insurance. It's not true. What about if, if Nigeria been to a party village? What about if we had this, you know, along the beach areas? What about if we had some land put out there and we have like, like um, the party village where you can do all kinds of parties? You have three, four star hotels. You have an airstrip, so you can actually come in from outside the country and land in there. And you can also have a jetty to cruise, just one huge party village. I tell you, that will announce Nigeria more than insurance and oil and gas. <laughs> and if that happens, then the people can come and visit. Then they can get to see who we are. Now listen, the problem is we are projecting ourselves on what we have and not who we are. So we're always talking about oil inside the ground. Safari. That is a gift from nature. That does nothing to the perception of any human being about you. Look at it, it's just like a beautiful girl who has all the body measurements. And she's beautiful. I look at her, she's nice. But when you take that lady and she learns one or two things and she becomes a beauty queen, the story is different. The value is different. So if we continue to talk about what we have, we will never get the image shift that we want. We need to now focus on who we are. And when I say who we are, I am not talking about you just giving us documentary all the time. I saw what Idris Elba did, documentary on God. That's not good enough. Because he just talks about us as our tradition. People don't want to hear, that's for the archives. That's for the, to keep software, just information. You need to tell your culture transform it into lifestyle and talk about how your culture hits your lifestyle. Let me give you an example and I've tried to run up from there. My wife told me about some woman, she went to give a talk somewhere and the woman said, America, she was talking about etiquette, you know, how to be respectful. And the woman said, I moved my children, she's an American, I moved my children away from America and I brought them to Nigeria because the culture in America does not support proper upbringing. And I said, boom, watch it a bit. That's an opportunity there because our culture supports good child upbringing values. That's a serious opportunity. Because if we have a government that's thinking, we would now go into the educational sector, take our culture, improve the educational environment, and our schools will attract parents from all over the world who are tired of the woke culture. That's an opportunity. Now you need to be very creative when you're talking about these things. But unfortunately, I must tell you, with all of these things, with all the efforts of Alibaba, all the efforts of Jay Martins, all the efforts of these people, magic does not happen until the government comes into the matter. That's just the truth. Real cannibal was never a global success until the president of Brazil came 
and joined the carnival and costumed himself and became a part of it. It was the story reverberated all over the world. That was the turning point of real carnival of Brazil. The turning point of Brazil again wasn't when they won the three World Cups. It would have just been like individual effort. The turning point in the image was when the government built the largest stadium in the world, Maracana Stadium. So magic happens when the government comes into it. And we must do everything within our power to ensure that not only do we go to them and get them to see what we should be doing, but we should go there and I'll twist them to be a part of this development, this new wave that's happening in Africa. Thank you so much. Um, we deserve a round of applause for that. We heard, we heard entertainment industry and I heard the new one today, Party 